welcome to Chris Cook for YouTube. I know that I have a number of viewers that know how to make the dish that I'm going to be making today. But I also have a lot of new viewers or viewers that are beginner cooks. And some of the things that they ask me to prepare for them is things that my older viewers may know, but my younger viewers don't know. So today I'm going to do two versions of the way I cook cornbread. I'm going to do it just the regular way, and then I'm going to do it the way that I prepare it for my family. Now, the I'm not going to, I don't prepare the cornbread in my home. My daughter does, and she makes the best cornbread in the world. Give her a shout out and a plug. Woo woo. <laughs> but she's here with me today, and you, while you will hear my voice, she's going to be the actual one that's going to be preparing the cornbread. So let me introduce you to... My daughter, this is my second from the oldest daughter, third, third from the oldest daughter, Hinaya. Wait to the camera, Hinaya. <laughs> okay, now tonight, Hinaya makes all of the cornbread in the family. I don't really do that, but I'm just here to show you the ingredients and how to put it together. Now, this is simple cornbread, and this is the cornbread that most people use. But I make a doctored cornbread, so I'm going to show you both versions of the cornbread. Let's get started with the ingredients that we're going to need. First, the best thing to make your cornbread in is a cast iron skillet. And I have looked for days not putting up this video trying to find my cast iron skillet. But I couldn't find my cast iron skillet. So I'm making it in the next best thing. When I make a smaller amount of cornbread, this is just a skillet that I have and don't play it short even though you know it may have it may look like it look these are sometimes the best skillets to work with so I have this this is like an eight inch round skillet so I'm going to use this just to prepare cornbread um in this skillet. you might say you're preparing a whole lot of cornbread yes I am but I can always save this cornbread for Thanksgiving even though Thanksgiving is two months away it doesn't matter you can start saving your cornbread now freezing it off, and then you'll have it for your dressing when you get ready to do it. Now, I can eyeball all of the items, but I'm going to actually tell you and show you what to do. So here we have an 8-inch cast iron skillet. In that, you see this sitting on my stove a lot of times. This is where I keep my used cooking oil. Okay, so I don't just fry chicken or fry something and then throw out the cooking oil. I put it in this container, and the reason why I have it in this container is because it has a little strainer in it. So that way it can catch all of the residue that will be left if I just pour straight grease in here from frying chicken or frying pork chops. So I keep this on my stove, and I use it for making cornbread or redoing chicken or whatever. This is not fish grease. This is chicken or pork chops grease. This is what I'm using. Fish grease, I put in a totally different container because once you recook with fish grease, your food is going to taste like that. I don't care what it is that you're cooking. So in this, you should put like two tablespoons of cooking oil just in the bottom. And you go ahead and preheat your oven. Some people preheat their oven to 375, which is what I'm doing. Some people preheat their oven to uh roughly 400 and they cook off their cornbread and I like my cornbread to have a little crack in it. Now I don't like all of my food that I'm baking to have a crack in it but my cornbread I do because that's the best cornbread and normally when you get a crack in the top of your bread or in your pies or anything it means that your oven was too uh, hot. But that's fine when it comes to cooking cornbread. So we're going to cook this off in the 375 degree oven. That's what I'm doing. You can do 375 or you can do 350, 375 or 400 depending on how much you're making. Now I told you I was going to do two versions of this. So this is my second skillet. Looks like a chip off the other uh, skillet. But this one is about a 10 inch skillet. Okay. And this one I'm going to make this cornbread roughly the way I make my cornbread or hen makes my cornbread on a daily basis whenever we're having cornbread, a meal that requires cornbread. So I'm going to go ahead and stick this in the oven right along with that so I can show you two versions. Now that we have that done, this is the best way to go about this because otherwise you're going to have to add salt, you're going to have to add baking powder or baking soda, whatever you use. This is a shorter version. This is Martha White corn meal mix. Now you don't have to get the one that's buttermilk. 
okay? You can get the regular cornmeal mix. And I always use this and the reason for that, and it doesn't have to be Martha White's. It can be anybody's. But the reason why I use this is because the baking powder is added, the salt is added. I don't have to add any of those. Now, I got this one here to show you because I normally keep my cornmeal in airtight containers which is sitting right here but i wanted to show you what the bag looks like so when you go into the store you will know what to look for now the version the martha white brand i like that but if your store does not carry the martha white brand don't even worry about it now this will eliminate your salt and it would eliminate your baking powder so here we have the cornmeal mix we're going to use of two and a half uh, cups of the cornmeal mix. We have a tablespoon of sugar, which is what we're going to use. Don't worry about that. That's just my uh, timer going off because I have something cooking in my oven. We're going to use one egg for this particular brand, and we're going to use equal parts of water and milk. Okay. The milk, if you don't have milk and you just make it with corn, with just the regular water, I found that it's a little bit gr um, grainy and it's a little bit crumbly. And if you add the, the milk, it tends to soften it up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go away. She's going to start to prepare this one. Once we get this one in the skillet, then I'm going to show you how to prepare the version that I really, really like. Be right back. Okay, now we're back, and she's already put in the cornmeal mix. And in the cornmeal mix, I told you the baking powder and the salt is already in there, so you don't have to worry about that. Next, she's going to pour in the sugar, and that is only um, a tablespoon of sugar. So she's going to pour all that in, and she's going to mix that together. And then once she does that, she's going to add the milk. And then once she adds the milk... She can go ahead and add the water. Now the consistency that you're looking for, and she's going to stir that. Now the consistency that you're looking for on this cornbread, it should look like a smoothie. And if you notice with a smoothie, it's not, um, you know, it's not all the way weak, but then it's, it's not overly thick. So she's going to stir that up real, real good. Now, if you get, if your consistency is not like um, the smoothie, then all you have to do is to add just a little bit more cornmeal. So you haven't mixed, messed up your mix, so don't even think that. All you have to do is just add some more cornmeal. Now, this has to be well stirred because you want to make sure that you stir everything up that's over inside of that mix and it's this is the simplest thing but I have a lot of young viewers and they need to know how to make cornbread and everybody had to start somewhere so this is not a big deal okay next she's going to go ahead and add one egg so for those two um, tablespoons of I'm sorry cups of cornmeal all of was required is just one egg now for the corn the second version of cornbread that I'm going to show you it's a little bit more than one egg, but this is the way, this is your standard cornbread. Probably the one that you would normally, and I say normally use if you're making, um, if you would like put it in the freezer for your dressing, this would be the one that you would normally use. This is not the one that I use. If I have this available, you know, if I, if for some reason I didn't make cornbread, my version of it, then I would go ahead on and use it. Now, I do want to show you the consistency of this. Lean it just a little bit so they don't know. The consistency of this cornbread. See it? This is like your smoothie. So that's the way you want your cornbread to be. There. Now, the next thing she's going to do is to add the... Remember the oil that we put in the skillet? And the reason why you put your oil in the skillet first is because as your oven preheats, you want your oil to preheat with the oven, okay? So you can just go ahead and get that oil inside of the skillet. And what that, that, that oil in the skillet does is it's going to keep your cornbread from sticking to the bottom. And that you don't want. And another thing you do when you take your cornbread out of the oven, a lot of people don't do this. First thing you do is rub some margarine or some butter on top. 
And what do you do that? Because you don't want that hard, crusty top. You want to see that hard, crusty top, and you want to have a little bit of a hint of it when you bite into the cornbread. But you don't want the whole thing to taste like you're, you, you know, you're eating some toast that you didn't butter, actually. So now that that's done, and see how simple that process was, then she's going to pour it into her skillet, which she has. You can bring the skillet over so they can see it. She's going to pour it there. And we're working from the table. Normally we would do this from the stove. She's going to pour this into her skillet. That's an 8 inch round. Okay. And then once she pours it into her skillet, we're going to bake this off in the oven. And then when it gets ready, and see that was just enough for my 8 inch skillet. And it's going to rise up a bit because of the cornmeal mix that's in it. Now, she's going to go ahead and put this in the oven. And once she put this in the oven, we're going to come back and I'm going to show you how to make my version of the cornbread that we make. Now, I'm not going to wash out this bowl because there's no need for me to do that because it's right along the same lines. I'll be right back. Okay, now we're back and this is the way that I like my cornbread, okay? Inside of this bowl, the first thing we did was we put a cup and a half of this cornmeal mix, okay? I got a cup and a half of that in there. Then, because we like sweet cornbread, we put in two of the small containers of Jiffy. I think Jiffy is like a quarter uh, a container in the store. It's catching on sale. You might even get it for 20 cents. But we put two of these inside of there. Then she's going to add the milk. She mixed that up and now she's going to add her milk which is one cup of milk and equal parts of water and of milk. She's going to go ahead and add the water and now she's going to go ahead and stir it. Now, I told you she didn't put in all the water, so she'll stir it a little while, and then if she needs more water, she'll put it in. But normally, it's just equal parts of water and of milk. Now, I told you, and please don't write me and say that you did not wash the bowl. I know I didn't wash the bowl because I'm making one type of cornbread, and it's no sense in washing the bowl because I'm just adding and making the second type of cornbread. Okay, so she's going to stir all of this up inside of the bowl. Like I said, I like a sweeter cornbread. And this, believe it or not, this makes very good dressing because I try it. Now, I do add a, I have one, I have like pieces of this because what I do is I just add, we have cornbread left over and I just go ahead and freeze it. So you're only getting pieces. And then I add one skillet of the regular um cornbread that's, that I've made that's not sweet in order to make my dressing. Okay, now that she's blended that together well, she's going to go ahead and add her eggs to that. And we use three eggs for this cornbread because we like a tender cornbread. And this is, is while it's lightly grained, you know, a grainy mix, it's not like cake. You can taste the cornmeal in it, but it just has a much better flavor to me it's more tender and it's along the lines that I like my cornbread so we're gonna mix that up together well now for this particular recipe remember it was two of your Jiffy mix one and a half cup of your cornmeal mix one cup of your milk and one cup of your water and she under poured it in three eggs we didn't need to add baking powder, didn't need to add salt because remember that was already inside of the cornmeal mix. Now remember the type of texture that I told you that you were looking for. You're looking for a texture that is just like a smoothie. Okay? See that? It's just like a smoothie. Now if you go a little bit past this, don't worry about it. It'll still be good cornbread. The only thing that you really have to worry about is if you make it too soupy. If you make it too soupy, then you got a problem. Now, once you've mixed that up well, then you're going to add your cooking oil that was in your bigger skillet. And if you saw, it was like two tablespoons of it. All you did was get it heated. going to pour that in. 
going to go ahead and mix that up well. Now, like I told you, I don't make the cornbread in my house, but I put her up against anybody making cornbread because she makes a very, very good cornbread. Got to give it to her there because she really, really does it. And you're supposed to train them in how, you know, your family and how to cook. That way the total burden won't lie on you. It'll lie on everybody in the household that's able to cook a good meal or to put out you know, a dish that is that lives up to your standard, so to speak. Okay, now once all of that is mixed together well, and you make certain that yours is mixed to weather, mixed together well, then she's going to pour it into her skillet, and we're going to put this in the same oven. And I already told you that the oven was 375 degrees. This is going to cook for roughly 35 minutes, maybe a little bit longer, okay? Scrape down the sides of your bowl here. And thank you. Okay, you want to get every little bit. And that's why I'm using the spatula because the spatula works well and stuff like this. It won't leave anything. It'll be just like your finger. You can go around and get every little bit out. Okay, so we're going to take this and we're going to put this off in the oven. And the next time you see us, this cornbread will be made. Be right back. Okay, now we're back and I'm going to take this one out of the oven as well. See what I tell you about that crack? That's some good cornbread right there. Okay, and what I told you also is as soon as you take your cornbread out of the oven, to keep that type that top soft, we're gonna go ahead and rub some margarine on top of it. Now we won't eat all of this cornbread and I only did this just to show you you know, a, a diversion that's normally that you cook your cornbread, but then if you like the kind that I use, because I like mine sweet, then that's the one you would use. That's real hot, because I just took it out. And this one I took out a little while earlier, because if you remember correctly, I made it a little bit earlier, so I took it out. Now my dinner is still cooking, so what I'm going to do is to go ahead and cut a piece of this cornbread. A lot of times your first, you know, one will come out just a little bit rougher. Okay, just to show you what that cornbread looks like. Okay, there it is. And you can still see the heat coming from it. That's your cornbread. Same way you see this one looking. It's the same way you'll see that one looking. Okay. Like I told you, I don't make the cornbread in my house. My daughter does, but... Thanks for watching Chris for YouTube. Bye. <laughs> Bye.